the 93 Hague Convention on Child Protection and Cooperation on Intercountry Adoption had a clear impact on the need, first of all, to collect the information, then to preserve this information, and then, uh, of course, to exchange it be between states. Uh, it also deals with the access uh, to information. So before 93, before this convention was uh, negotiated and, and then approved into force, there were those, such obligations didn't exist. And therefore it was very important that all the information, including about identity, about the child, uh, should be kept. So that's the first step. We need to collect that information and we need to preserve it. And then once the information is there, we have to see how the person will be able to access to it. Therefore, the Convention clearly establishes in its Article 9 this obligation for central authorities or other competent authorities or approved uh, bodies to really have all this information. And then uh, once the child or the adoptee gets older, he will see if he wants to access it. This uh, right to access is not uh, to everybody, it is specifically to the child or his representative when he is uh, a minor. And then this access, it's also said in the convention, that should be uh, given with appropriate guidance. This is also very important, not just go and open any information. Guidance is really key in order to be able to process that information. And finally, because when the convention was negotiated, the access and secrecy and other matters were quite controversial one, the convention says insofar as permitted by the law of the state. This is something that has been changing and more and more uh, states are giving more access, uh, but is still there in the convention. Then um, another question is how this is being implemented by states, because we know what the convention says, but it is even more important to see how what is happening in practice. Um, the convention only establishes minimum rules, minimum standards, and therefore states should try to improve and increase those standards in order to help them as well to interpret and properly apply the convention the ACCH organizes each five years usually what we call uh, special commission meetings these are meetings of all states parties to the convention and in there they uh, approve conclusion and recommendation and they have more guidance for states in order to properly implement the convention and if we look at what has happened there in the past, then the first one, as we have spoken, is the collection of information. Who has to collect that information? That's very clear, specifically because in the past, all the information, in many cases, because adoptions were, doing, were done by private bodies, uh, therefore such information was kept by private bodies. And now we know more and more that there is a need that this information is also kept by public bodies, public authorities, in order to make, uh, to have a better, to just go to one single place where all the information can be, uh, can be kept. Therefore, this is important, these things that bit by bit, but not all states do, do it now, should be kept, if possible, as well by public authorities, if possible, as well by a centralized authority. Then we also are seeing something is changing, because when the convention was negotiated, all the information mostly were in paper, so it was, um, it was paper and then you needed a big place to store it. Uh, you needed to keep it there in order to be safe, that it's not destroyed by fires, by other things. So this has of course evolved, now we are more into a digital world, so we have to as well keep those records in a digital way. So that's uh, extremely important to see where you, you are uh, keeping that, where you are preserving that information. Something as well that has been discussed in the past is for how long such information should be kept. Because now it is not only the adoptee who may want to access that information, but it can be somebody, his, the children of the adoptee who may want to have access. So if possible, the recommendation of the Special Commission is that 
this information should be kept in perpetuity. So in order to help um, people to, uh, to access whenever they want, whenever they feel, so that there is not a limit. This should be hopefully easier if all the information has been digitalized. But of course, this is of course a, a challenge for some states. So that's something that we really need to work on it uh, with authorities, bodies, to really provide and help um, adoptees that go and look for their origins and that try to have access to this. So how are we going to support them? Who is going to pay for that? Uh, how can we help them to find information? If the information is uh, not found, what do we do? If the information is found and reveals illicit practices, what do we do? So there is still a lot of room for uh, learning, for improving and try to give a better service and assistance to adoptees and their families.